We have made it to Act 5 of Cymbeline today on Shakespeare. Um, yesterday we had, we got to check in with the king and find out that his, he's in a bad place because his whole world feels to be crumbling around him. And he decided to spare Pisanio, who he thinks is um, in on all of this stuff and, and not telling him things. So that happened. And then we have this cute little scene where Bellarius and his adopted slash stolen sons um, are chatting and the boys are like, we want to go fight in this war that's a Bruin because wars are Bruin. And Bellarius is like, that's not a good idea. And they're like, we don't care. We want to fight the Romans anyway. And so then Bellarius is like, well, I guess if my boys are fighting, I got to fight too. And then that lands us in Act 5, Scene 1, which the entire scene is just this monologue from Posthumus that we, have, we haven't heard from in a while. And I don't know if it actually counts as a scene, if it's just a monologue, but Shakespeare wrote it that way, so we're going to go with it and say, this is Act 5, Scene 1, this is Posthumus. We get to check in with him because Pisanio brought him this blood-soaked handkerchief that is supposed to be proof that Imogen is dead, even though we all know that she isn't really. So he comes in with this bloody handkerchief. He, what is with Shakespeare and bloody handkerchiefs? He comes in with this bloody handkerchief and he says, Yea, bloody cloth, I'll keep thee. For I am wished thou shouldst be colored thus. You married ones, if each of you should take this course, how many must murder wives much better than themselves for rying but a little, oh, Pisanio. Every good servant does not all commands, no bond but to do just ones. Gods, if you should obtain vengeance on my faults, I never had lived to put on this. So had you saved the noble Imogen to repent and struck me, wretch, more worth your vengeance. But alack, you snatch some hence for little faults. That's love, to have them fall no more. You some permit to second ills with ills, each elder worse, and make them dread it to the doer's thrift. But Imogen is your own. Do your best wills and make me blessed to obey. I am brought hither among the Italian gentry and to fight against my lady's kingdom. Tis enough that Britain, I have killed thy mistress. Peace, I'll give no wound to thee. Therefore, good heavens, hear patiently my purpose. I'll disrobe me of these Italian weeds and suit myself as does a Briton peasant. So I'll fight against the part I come with. So I'll die for thee, O oh, Imogen even for whom my life is every breath a death. And thus, unknown, pitied nor hated, to the face of peril myself I'll dedicate. Let me make men know more valor in me than my habits show. God's put the strength of the Leonati in me. To shame the guise of the world, I will begin the fashion less without and more within. So yeah, he's kind of regretting that letter that he wrote saying, kill my wife. He thinks now that that's a bad idea because, you know, killing your wife's a bad idea. So he's going to ditch the Italians that he's with and fight this Italian versus British war. He's gonna fight on the side of the British so that he hopefully feels less guilty about having his wife killed. I don't know, is that fair punishment? Anyway, we'll see how well that goes for him tomorrow and in the following days. Mwah.